This next couple of sections is going to take a look at growth and how we can model growth with functions. The first type of growth is going to be linear growth. So the question we're going to ask is, how can we model linear growth? And first, we should probably define what we mean by linear growth. Linear growth is when we increase, or it could also be decrease, by the same amount. So we might be adding 5 every time, plus 5, plus 5, plus 5. Or we might be subtracting 5 every time, minus 5, minus 5, minus 5, minus 5. And this idea of adding and subtracting to the previous number leads to this idea that we call a recursive relationship. And the idea with a recursive relationship is we have something that's usually written like p sub 0. That represents the starting amount. And then after p sub 0, we'll see p sub 1, which represents uh, the amount after one year or one month. And so you'll see something with p sub 0 the previous number, um, and then something to get to one year, or maybe one month, or day, or week, or whatever. And then there's going to be a p sub 2, which is going to take the previous number, which is p sub 1, and then do something with it. to get to two years, or again, months, or whatever. So if I have, for example, I currently have 23 shot glasses. in my collection. I gain 3 per year. We can model this linear growth, because we're gaining the same amount, increasing by the same amount every year with a recursive relationship. We can say p sub 0, representing my starting amount, is 23. p sub 1 takes the previous number, which is 23, and it adds that common difference. It adds 3 more that I'm going to gain in the next year to get a total of 26. And then p2, the second number, is going to be the previous number of 26 plus the common difference of 3 to get our new number of 29. And we can keep going in this way. After three years, we take the previous number of 29 and we add 3 to get 32. And so we start to build this recursive relationship that can be generalized to say p sub n, the nth term is whatever the number before it was, p sub n minus 1, plus 3. And we usually need to define where it starts. So we'll also say where p sub 0 equals 23. This is the recursive relationship that represents the number of shot glasses in my collection. It means to find the number we have at year n, we take the previous year and add 3. Just to clearly define, there are some key elements in this formula.
first key element is p sub 0 always must be defined. It is the initial value. It's where the recursive relationship starts. We actually saw this all the way back in Math 98 in our pre-college -ma math classes. The starting initial value in a linear relationship we called the y-intercept. That value where it starts. And then we add some amount. The amount added. to the previous term is called the common difference. And that's how much the graph is changing over time. And back in Math 98, we used the term slope for that. And so we'll often see these relationships represented as p sub n equals the previous p sub n minus 1 plus some common difference, where the initial value p sub 0 equals whatever the initial value was. And this way, we can build a recursive formula for really any relationship that is linear growing by the same amount over time. Now, these recursive definitions are nice if we want to find like the second or third year. But what if we wanted to find out how many shot glasses I have after 50 years of collecting three per year? That would take a long time to list out the 49th term, the 48th term, the 47th term, all the previous terms we'd have to calculate in order to use the uh, recursive formula. So sometimes, rather than using the recursive formula, it's better to use what we call the explicit formula. So doing the same example to kind of build an explicit formula, let's say I have 23 shot glasses. Same example here. And gain 3 per year. And I'm going to look at the recursive generation of the first few terms and see if we can notice a pattern by generalizing what's happening. So the 0th term was 23. Then what we did is we took that 23 and we added 3 to it because that's how many I gained in the next year. That adding of 3 only happened once, so I'm going to say 3 times 1 to get the number 26. And then for the second term, we took essentially 23 had the 3 added to it twice, once for the first term and once for the second term. And when we did that, we got 29. For the third term, the 23 had the 3 added three times, once for the first term, once for the second term, once for the third year. And when we added it three times, we'd get 32. Now, if I continue this pattern on, we see p sub n is going to always be 23 plus 3 times something. And you notice that something matches the term number that we're working with. So we're going to say 23 plus 3 times n. Or the way we're probably more used to seeing it is we put the 3 times n up front plus 23. And this becomes the explicit formula, 3 times n plus 23 for the number of shot glasses I own at any given year. Some key elements to this formula is we already know the y equals mx plus b formula from graphing of lines. And what's nice is m in y equals mx plus b is the common difference. 
And b is the initial value. So we saw 23 was the initial value. That's the b that's added on. 3 was the common difference that I was gaining. That's the m of y equals mx plus b. So this is really another way of looking at that slope-intercept formula. So if I wanted to work out an example where, let's say, the population of a bacteria in an experiment starts at 83 bacteria and grows by 4 bacteria per hour. It's growing by the same amount each hour. That's going to be our linear growth, where we add the same amount over and over again. We can model this with a recursive formula. The recursive formula needs to know where we start and how to get the next term. Well, we know we start at 83 bacteria. And to get the next term, we take the previous term, which we represent with the p sub n minus 1, and we add that common difference. We're going to gain 4 to get the next hour. And that becomes our recursive formula representing add 4 to the previous hour, add 4 to the previous hour, and we end up with our new hour. We can also find the explicit formula. The explicit formula says p sub n is equal to, and it's a lot like y equals mx plus b. m is the amount of change, which is 4 per hour times the number of term, plus the starting value of 83. And that explicit formula is probably easier to work with because I can find out after 24 hours how many bacteria there are by just plugging 24 into that n. The population at 24 hours is equal to 4 times 24 plus 83. And I can do that on my calculator really fast to get 179. So after 24 hours, there's 179 bacteria. We can even approach it the other way and say, how long until there's 500 bacteria? Well, the 500 in this case is the answer, the population. So 500 would be equal to the 4n plus 83. And this becomes a simple two-step equation we can solve for the number of hours by subtracting 83 from both sides to get 417, and dividing both sides by 4 to get the number of hours is 104.25 hours. And depending on how we want to round, we might call that 104 hours, 105 hours, or we might leave it at 104 hours and 15 minutes, a quarter of an hour. So that's linear growth. We're adding the same amount over and over again. It can be represented both with a recursive or an explicit formula. You should know how to build and use each of those. So take a look at the homework to practice some of those. Let me know if we have any questions. And in our next video, we'll look at a different type of growth.